Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for our news bulletin for tonight to be presented jointly by Basim Bekdash and Rashid Haidar. Deputy Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Armed Forces, Minister of Defense, Lieutenant General Fahid Jassim al frej has stressed that the Syrian Arab Army is today engaged in a global battle and war in which it is defending the homeland and citizen security and the values of the human society. In its speech to the Syrian TV, Lieutenant General Frey said, In its current battle, the Syrian army now is defending the right, justice and the international law which affirms respecting the country's sovereignty and preventing interference in the internal affairs of the independent states. The minister greeted Syria people's leadership and army on the occasion of the 39th anniversary of the October Liberation War, stressing the armed forces' determination to restore security and stability to the homeland Syria. He also saluted the resisting national media, which has proved its ability to go to battle with high efficiency, side by side with the army heroes. Lieutenant General Frey said, quote, The landmarks of sovereignty and dignity generated by the October Liberation War are now being crystallized and they're at their best through serious steadfastness, the loyalty of its people and the valor of, the, of its ideologized army, end quote. Despite all the conspiracies and pressures faced over decades now, the minister added, Syria's sons today, just like during the Trine War or Tobo War, are committed to the components of identity and are against all forms of domination and submission. The Syrian Armed Forces had earlier yesterday marked the 39th anniversary of the October Liberation War and that restored the Arab nation's pride, dignity and influential presence in the international arena and boosted its standing among the nations and the peoples of the world. On this occasion, commanders of military units delivered speeches pledging to the nation and to President Bashar al-Assad that they will remain in a state of high alert to thwart all Zionist Western plots and projects of hegemony and seek to undermine the dignity of the Syrian Arab people and their sovereignty. They also pledged to confront the gangs of the armed terrorists and cleanse the nation of them with the determination of the army and the strong will of the Syrian people, asserting that the great sacrifices Syria is witnessing today have united the entire Syrian people under the banner of the homeland, noting that this is the continuation of the sacrifices made by the martyrs of the October Liberation War. That's him. Thank you, Rashid. Units of the armed forces have cleansed Al Hami and Qatsiya areas in Damascus countryside of armed terrorist groups, declaring them safe areas. Meanwhile, the armed forces confronted two armed terrorist groups which attempted to infiltrate into Syria from Lebanon in Halat and Erdlin sites in Telkalah countryside in Homs. Sana reporter quoted a source in the province as saying that the armed forces inflicted heavy losses upon the members of the armed groups while the others fled into the Lebanese lands. In Aleppo, an army unit killed members of the terrorist group led by Jarad Sharouk at Hammam al-Bayada area in Aleppo. Another unit of the armed forces killed a large number of terrorists who attempted to infiltrate into Hanano Barak in Aleppo. In another area, an army unit of the armed forces targeted terrorists gathering in Karmel Jabal in al arqub area in Aleppo, killing and wounding a number of them. In Hama, a unit of the armed forces destroyed terrorist or a terrorist hideout in al Hwais village in al Ghab area in Hama countryside. Sana reporter quoted a source in the province as saying that the armed forces killed all the terrorists in the hideout which they were using as a center to attack the citizens in the area. The source added that the authorities also seized five explosive devices in a terrorist hideout in a Barudia neighborhood in Hama, asserting that the devices weighed between 15 and 40 kilograms. The source pointed out that the authorities also discovered a tunnel inside the hideout which the armed terrorist groups were using to smuggle weapons, ammunition and terrorists into the city. And in Homs countryside, the competent authorities destroyed four Dushka-equipped cars and killed a number of terrorists in Jusie and al Atifiye in al qsayr countryside in Homs and confiscated their weapons. 
The parties of the National Progressive Front, NPF, and National and Progressive Powers are to organize a political forum on Monday, that is tomorrow, under the title of Political Dialogue and National Reconciliation, a path to restore stability and security at Damascus-based Damaros Hotel. The two-day forum tackles the topics of political dialogue, the army as the shield of homeland, combating terrorism, rejection of foreign intervention, national reconciliation, and protecting the state and institutions. Back to you, Rashid. Thank you very much, Valsim. At the invitation of Get Your Hands Off Syria and the Australians for Syria's group and the Syrian Arab and Syrian and communities in Australia, the Australian cities of Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, and Hobart have witnessed mass rallies in support of, the, of Syria against the campaign led by the West and the oil protectorates. The participants expressed support for the Syrian leadership, people, and army under the leadership of President Bashar al-Assad. They chanted slogans saluting the homeland's army and its role in defending the country in the face of the crimes committed by the armed terrorist groups, stressing that President Bashar al-Assad is the safety valve for Syria to come out from the crisis. The participants blasted at the armed groups and their terrorist acts, especially terrorism that has gripped Aleppo, thanking the friendly countries for their supportive stances. Meanwhile, members of the Syrian community and the Syrian and Arab students studying in India, with the participation of the Indian political and popular figures, organized a stand to express support for Syria's leadership, people and army against the global war launched against their country. The participants, who gathered in front of the Syrian embassy in New Delhi in celebration of the 39th anniversary of the October Liberation War, raised banners stressing their standing by Syria under the leadership of President Bashar al-Assad and the Syrian army. The Austrian newspaper, the Presse, has said that Turkey, Qatar and Saudi Arabia are responsible for the escalation of violence in Syria as they are supporting the terrorists and providing them with weapons and shelter. In an article published on Saturday, the newspaper warned against Turkey's attempts to use the latest case of tension on the Syrian-Turkish borders as a pretext for a military intervention that is meant to achieve a special objective, referring to the repeated calls by Turkish Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan for establishing a no-fly zone over Syria. The paper stressed that Turkey, Qatar and Saudi Arabia are responsible for the increasing civilian casualties in Syria as they are supporting the armed terrorist groups there, adding that the majority of the Turkish people are against any war with Syria. Prime Minister Dr. Wa'il Halqi inaugurated yesterday at Talaqi, or the meeting in English, satellite channel and Syrian FM radio station as part of a new system that highlights political, social and economic national issues. During the inaugural ceremony, al Halqi said that the Syrian media will belie the defamatory allegations of misleading media. al Halqi said, I would like to seize this opportunity to stress to our people that we are surely heading for victory. Congratulating the Syrian people and the media on the inauguration of these two media platforms, which are, quote, to be added to the new system to bring to light national causes, be them political, social or economic, end quote. On his part, Information Minister Omran Zabi said that the inauguration of the radio station and the channel is the culmination of outstanding efforts exerted by the national media cadres, adding that there will be a free democratic platform open to all political and social powers. As Zabi said, the message of media is an embodiment of the national message saluting the workers and the general organization of radio and TV. Azabi saluted Syria's martyrs and the Syrian Arab army, the Syrian people and President Bashar al-Assad on the anniversary of the Shireen War, recalling the late President Hafez al-Assad who achieved this monumental victory. The Minister of Information also launched work on the English language electronic newspaper, Syria Times, and the directorates of electronic media and war media. Azabi stressed that the ministry started these projects because it needs additional tools to communicate with societies that do not speak the Arabic language. 
Meanwhile, in Moscow, the Ministry of Information inaugurated yesterday the Syrian Media Center with the aim of developing and enhancing media, cultural and political communication between Syria and Russia. The center's mission is to relay an objective and true image of the events in Syria and to explain Syria's policy and stances to the Russian public opinion. The center, which was opened on the occasion of the 39th anniversary of the October War liberation, will also convey the Russian principal stances to the Syrian public opinion in cooperation with Russian media outlets to consolidate friendship ties between the two peoples. During the inauguration ceremony, Syria's ambassador in Moscow, Riyad Haddad, said in his opening speech, the center will be con- or will contribute to boosting friendship and cooperation ties between Syria and Russia through conveying the reality of the ongoing events in Syria to the Russian public opinion and conveying what is happening in Russia and its achievements to the Arab public opinion. And now over to the final item with my colleague Rashid. Thank you very much, Basim. Actually, let's go to Venezuela. The Venezuelan voters head for the ballot boxes today to cast their votes actually for the two rivals in the presidential elections, namely President Hugo Chavez and the opposition candidate Enrique Caprices Randowski. Details are in the following report. In a press conference yesterday, Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez has called on all political sides to accept the results of elections, stressing that the world won't collapse before any side, no matter the result. Chavez seeks to win another presidential term over his rival, the opposition candidate Enric Cabriles Radonsky, in the presidential elections today, which is considered the biggest electoral challenge for Chavez into his election for the first time by the end of 1998. Earlier opinion polls showed the advance of Chavez over his rival, Cabrales, who was able later on to reduce the difference between the two candidates and become a real threat for Chavez in these presidential elections. Chavez has had a wide popular base. He faced an attempt of a coup d'etat in 2002, and then he had cancer to be submitted afterwards to two surgeries. He has considered that his promise that the socialist revolution would be to get rid of poverty is unbreakable in the coming six years if he wins the elections. On the other hand, the opposition candidate, Cabrales, who was chosen by around 30 rightist opposition parties last February, is a lawyer and an expert in economy. Cabrales has promised to end the political division between the opposition and those who support Chavez. Cabrales has also promised to end the state of insecurity in the country and make a reconciliation between the public and the private sectors. The vote centers are numbered 13.800 and supplied with electronic devices to prevent any cheating in the process of voting. With that report, ladies and gentlemen, that came from Venezuela, we end our news for tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Damascus Radio presents News and Views. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The October War of Liberation in 1973 formed a distinguished mark in the struggle of the Arabs, particularly the Syrians, during the Arab Zion struggle. This mark has proved that the Zionist military ability, supported by the United States, is not under undefeatable, and that the Arab soldiers and the Syrian ones in particular were able to change the equation regarding their courage and deal with the modern technology weapons. Therefore, the results of October War came to be a witness of the victory of the two Arab armies in Syria and Egypt over the Zionist occupation schemes hatched against the Arab homeland for more than 60 years. Maybe that victory achieved in 1973 has been the main reason behind the continued wars against Syria in the past four decades, as the United States and the colonial West were the main players in support of the Zionist entity and its aggressive settlement and occupation policy. 
Syria has always worked on resisting the Zionist project in the region, creating an extended state of resistance to become its main hard axis in defense of the Arab nation's interests and existence. The Syrians in particular and the Arabs in general should be proud of the Syrian Arab army which achieved victory in October war on the Golan land and defeated the Zionist occupation army. After the October war of liberation, thus to direct its weapons against Syria's enemies. The Syrian Arab army, which defeated the occupation in the October war, is also able to defeat all kinds of terrorism on its land and are, achieves victory at the end. That was News and Views from Damascus Radio. Damascus Radio presents Syrian Local Press Review. Hello, dear listeners to all of you. The Syrian dailies issued today in Damascus highlighted the following news items and headlines. On the 39th anniversary of the October liberation of war, President Al-Assad visits the Martyrs Monument on Qasyun Mountain. Defense Minister says our armed forces are more determined to restore security and eliminate terrorists. Our armed forces cleans Al-Himma Qutsiyya in Damascus countryside of terrorist groups. Mass rallies in Australia and India in support to Syria against terrorism. General Foreign Trade Organization enforces several contracts to ensure citizens' needs. Russia welcomes Security Council's statement on terrorist acts in Syria. A Russian aircraft carrying 24 tons of medical equipment and medicine arrives in Damascus International Airport. Prime Minister Dr. Wael Al-Halqi inaugurates uh, Talaki, which means meeting, Talaki, which means meeting, satellite channel, and Syrian FM radio station as part of a new system that highlights political, social, and economic national issues. The Syrian Daily Athora reported that the Russian Foreign Ministry has welcomed the UN Security Council's statement on terrorist acts in Syria and its firm condemnation of them. Russia Today website quotes Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister Gennady Gatilov in a post on his Twitter page as saying that the Security Council responded to the terrorist acts in Syria upon Russia's initiative, adding that the difficult situation in Syria requires objective assessment. The Security Council on a Friday issued a statement condemning Aleppo terrorist bombings last Wednesday, which claimed the lives of tens and injured more than 100 civilians, and for which Al-Qaeda linked Jabhat al-Nusra claimed responsibility. The statement expressed the member states' sympathy and sincere condolences to the families of the victims of these heinous acts and the Syrian people. That was a review of the Syrian local press issued in Damascus this morning. Damascus Radio presents Welcome to Syria A 
weekly program prepared and presented by Rashid Haydar. Directed by Suhail Khoury. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome to this new edition of Welcome to Syria. coast includes a number of cities that bear witness to the time-old civilization that flourished on the Syrian soil over different periods of history. Jebla, the Syrian small port on the Mediterranean coast, is located about 30 kilometers to the south of the Latakia city. In the city, there is a huge archaeological amphitheater which was built at the beginning of the 2nd century AD. It is only about 90 meters in diameter, with a maximum seating capacity of 8,000 spectators, but it is undergoing restoration that should make it one of the best theaters in Syria. The amphitheater is surrounded by 17 doors, in addition to passageways which were means for spectators to enter the theater. Jebla's the amphitheater dates back to the Roman era. It was built at the 2nd century AD. The general design of this theater was made according to architectural style, which prevailed in theaters of the Greek and Roman eras. Sokas Hill near Jebla City is located about 6 meters to the south of Jebla with 24 meters high. The hill presents a civilization mixture of the Phoenicians, Canaanites and the Arab Islam. Through its port, the local and imported goods were distributed to the Mediterranean world. The long history of the hill indicates that it formed a point for cultural and commercial communication among cities of the eastern and western Mediterranean. Some important antiquities and findings were found in Sokas Hill, including local and imported clay findings, in addition to Egyptian, Cypriot, Greek and Lebanese findings. Traces of the Phoenician temple, which was built at the beginning of the 5th century BC, were discovered and this indicates the continuation of worship in the area. The city also includes a number of important archaeological finds and hills, such as Tel Siena, where archaeological excavations have indicated the deeply rooted history and great civilizations the city saw over different periods of history. to Welcome to Syria. A weekly program prepared and presented by Rashid Haidar and directed by Zuhair Khouri.
Damascus Radio presents Arab Press Radio. A weekly program of prepared by Arthur and Nabil C. and read by Lemmasites. With the company of sound engineer Suhail Khoury. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. The Arab press continue to focus on the latest developments of the Syrian crisis and bets by some states to keep on terrorist backing and appealing for military intervention in Syria. The Arab journalist also followed up the stances of the West on the Syrian question as the Syrian refugees in Jordan are being abused and the crisis. Palestine remains and an all Arab fixtures and the situation there exacerbates drastically while the West Distance still, and I fold it towards the Israel repressive mob conduct. Still, a steady stay in the Arab press is the Zionist discretion of the Holy Al Aqsa Mosque. In occupied Jerusalem, the papers carried extensive comments on this infamous profanity in which the Zionist settlers storm into the lazy out of Al Aqsa courtyard and pray holes while exerting hectic attempts persistently to Judaize this holy city and Al Aqsa premises. Now to details. Starting with the neo colonist onslaught on cosmic spheres of the Arab land, the Lipanese daily Albina takes the chance to review the revolutions storming the Arab era, which have led the Arab homeland to ambiguous deadlock, the Lipanese daily writes. Who would ever believe that the American imperialist and its allies together with the Zionist usurpist entity really want for us freedom, democracy, peace and prosperity? It is an American cosmos big war, planted a couple of decades away. It is a project to fracture, fracture the whole word, Arab word, that does not exempt any state, no matter its color, shade, or religion and sect. The Persian daily Al-Quds al-Arabi quotes Professor Yazir, an Israeli analyst, as saying on the limes light of the course of developments in the Arab area and particularly Syria. The West specifically fears military intervention in the Arab Levant, as Sham, Syria wants or owns a stronger army with potential sufficient to deter and deal dolly any foreign intervention in Syria. In similar course, the Tunisian uh, journal Ashark daily criticized Qatar schools for an Arab military intervention in Syria. The paper writes this please comes as Qatar pens on recovering its dramatically shrinking towards the Syrian file and to complete for its losses inside Syria and outwards geographically. Qatar and the Arab League are uninclusive and an un-Arab in their structure. They work in coordination hand-in-hand hand onto the Syrian file in any way that the first Qatar suggests while the Arab League ratifies or Qatari dictates. The latest demand is the proposed Arab military and political intervention in Syria. Qatar is fully aware of its big losses in the Syrian file, and as it suffers geographically, Qatar will be more in strategy in full culture and many other spheres that are unconceivable to it. You're listening to Damascus Radio, the broadcasting service of the Syrian Arab Republic. Before we sign off with the national anthem, here is a final look at the new summary. Deputy Commander-in-Chief of the Army and the Armed Forces, Minister of Defense, Lieutenant General Fahad Jassim Lefrej, stresses that the Syrian army is engaged in a global war. Units of the Armed Forces cleans Al-Hami and Qatsaya areas in Damascus countryside of armed terrorist groups, declaring them safe areas. At the invitation of Get Your Hands Off Syria and Australians for Syria groups and the Syrian and Arab communities in Australia, several areas witnessed mass rallies in support of Syria against the campaign led by the West and the oil-producing Gulf states. 
The Austrian newspaper Die Presse says that Turkey, Qatar and Saudi Arabia are responsible for the escalation of violence in Syria. And Prime Minister Dr. Wa'il Halqi inaugurates at Talaqi, or the meeting satellite channel, and Syrian FM radio station as part of the new system that highlights political, social and economic national issues. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of our transmission for tonight. Until we meet again tomorrow at the same time and on the same frequencies, we wish you all the best from Damascus Radio, the broadcasting service of the Syrian Arab Republic. Good night.